stay with me until the end. I'll give what I can, what I have left. Let it go here and no further. This dark corner of existence is a Hello and thank you for checking out our review of Other Side from Lightbulb Crew and Focus Home Interactive. My name's Mick Fraser and I'm here to guide you through this grim, dark, unforgiving world. Is Other Side the cure you're looking for or just another house of plague? Put an end to suffering. First of all, I can't tell if Other Side is an allegory or not. Part of me thinks it must be, as your overlord like mother is defeated in the opening scene by the child, a corrupted vessel she once loved. He is in the grip of the suffering, a mysterious malaise that distorts all it touches. To fight it, the mother sends her white-haired daughters to put an end to hordes of terrifying nightmare creatures and depraved bosses with names like the surgeon, the deacon and the maid. Now I'm not much of a scholar, but I'm pretty certain that all this works nicely as a metaphor for a frantic mother desperately trying to heal her dying child. Charming. Will the poor one's suffering never end? I could be wrong of course, but even picking apart the flavour text reveals clues to this end, and if I'm right, then I'm even more impressed with Other Side's world than I already was, thanks to the incredible atmosphere and artwork. It's a stunning universe, macabre, menacing ambience dripping off it like a viscous toxin from the tip of a blade. Shades of grey clash with sharp shocks of brilliant red, and each of your pale elfin daughters is beautiful, delicate and as deadly as the plague itself. At surface level, Other Side shares similarities with XCOM. It's an isometric turn-based tactics game, but it cross-pollinates its DNA with other titles and genres, most notably Bloodborne and Dead Cells. From the former, it takes its setting a gothic Victorian-era city in the grip of a nightmarish disease. From the latter, it takes its punishing design, forcing you to inch forward a little bit at a time, each failure removing your upgrades but leaving some of your unlocks intact. You advance through eras which are split into days, each one containing a selection of missions called synapses that lead to a boss on day 7. You must complete at least one synapse each day in order to rest your daughters so that they can fight again. Like a roguelite, other side expects you to fail, and fail you most certainly will. Initially, your army of daughters comes in three classes, each spawning with randomised looks, stats and personalities. Blade Masters are defensively weak but offensively strong, Soul Slingers come armed with twin pistols and heightened agility and Shield Bearers act like tanks, soaking up damage and throwing themselves in harm's way to protect their sisters. Every few levels you'll be given a binary choice of which new skill to unlock and deciding which works best is as much about your other daughters as it is about the one you're upgrading. Combat takes place on a dynamic initiative timeline which determines the order you and the enemy move in. And there are four main types of skill in Other Side. Instant actions are just that, abilities that trigger as soon as you hit the spacebar or A or cross on a controller. These are usually high damage attacks or evades. Then there are delayed actions which will trigger a little way up the timeline. Reactions are skills which only trigger as a result of another action taking place. And finally, there are buffs and debuffs that last for a set amount of time. These skills used correctly allow you to stack up combo attacks for massive damage. For example, you can activate a reaction on your soul slingers called Intercepting Shot, which will shoot any enemy in range who attempts to attack one of her sisters. Or Shield Bearers can use the Saving Grace ability to switch places with another daughter and absorb the damage while returning her own. The downside to these reactions and buffs is that they each cost 5 or 10% of the daughter's remaining health every time you activate them, and healing has a price of its own. Because each run or recollection is designed to be a fight to the death, there are no curative items or skills in other side. Instead, the only way to heal one daughter is to sacrifice another of equal or higher level. When you do, they'll usually absorb a portion of their sister's soul, gaining higher attack or defence, maybe greater initiative, but it can be a hard choice to make, especially when you have two high level daughters and both are wounded. But as the game tells you, one dead daughter is better than two. You can resurrect the dead at the cost of a hard earned token and it's worth doing so, as daughters gain stackable traits the more they fight. A daughter who repeatedly takes no damage, for example, may become arrogant, earning less XP but doing more direct damage. A daughter who kills many enemies in one synapse may become aggressive and have a higher critical chance. One who evades regularly can become agile and so on. These traits help shape your daughters into powerful, unique warriors, but the road is a long and arduous one. Because other side is damn hard. I've forged through some of the toughest games in recent years, but other side has given me some serious problems. 
For a start, it's in a state of permanent Iron Man mode, and every action instantly saves, so you can't reload if you fail. You'll unlock memories that can be assigned to skills to add attributes like increased damage or reduce mobility, but they reset at the end of every run. Remembrances, on the other hand, can be unlocked at the start of each run to grant things like I don't know, resurrection token or increased damage, maybe daughters that spawn at a higher level, or crucially, the ability to skip to whichever era you were playing in when you died. If it sounds complex, that's because it is. Other Side has systems on its systems, with random number generators operating behind the scenes and a mesh of different currencies and unlockables to get your head around. And on top of this, it's punishingly difficult. The bosses in particular are massively powerful roadblocks that will take multiple attempts and a high understanding of all of those systems to beat. The second boss in particular for me felt unfair for a very long time, until I realised that Other Side wanted me to give in to the grind. I'm not overly keen on a tactics game that forces the grind on its players, I'd sooner there were more organic ways to get stronger like side quests or gear to equip than simply repeating the same missions over and over again, but it is what it is. Admittedly, there is an option to play everything at double speed, which is great for certain missions like survival or rescue, where you're having to wait for huge queues of enemies to do their business. Now, any game that displays its mission-specific difficulty as challenging, hard or impossible, honestly, those are other side's difficulty options, it's clearly playing for keeps and other side doesn't mess around. Missions like the aforementioned rescue see you escorting an incredibly fragile bright soul through a small army of cultists and beasts, while in ritual missions you've a set time to kill off a particularly powerful entity before it nukes the entire map. In survival, you simply just have to stay alive until you're given an exit and then get the hell out of dodge. When you fail, your daughters go to the cemetery and can be resurrected with their skills and traits intact. Using tokens to bring them back allows you to grind XP, making the toughest few stronger in preparation for facing off against the boss. At times, it feels a little bit unfair as there are certain mission types where enemies will just spawn endlessly until you reach the objective, and one mistake can cost you dearly. The grind to the boss can become repetitive as well when you fail over and over, and there are a few times when I just had to stop playing and walk away. Technically, it performed very well on PC with just a few issues. The first is that sometimes the movement grid is a bit temperamental and it'll take a bit of faffing around to let you move a daughter. Also, the mother has just the one verbal response to each action and she'll repeat them endlessly throughout the campaign. The atmosphere mostly makes up for it though, thanks to the gorgeous visuals and the incredible music direction. If anything, Other Side may put some players off with its difficulty. This is a hardcore game for people who want a serious challenge. Those who like to play tactics games with Iron Man mode and permadeath enabled. It's a testament to Lightbulb Crew that despite my frustrations and occasional blind and rage, I didn't give up. I wanted to learn the secrets of this world. I wanted to heal the child and save the mother from her pain. It's hard not to care about your daughters too, watching them become more bruised and bloody with each fight they survive, seeing their expressions become more hollow and wretched as you sacrifice their sisters to keep them alive. You can rename them, and as they develop traits and grow, you'll slowly become attached to them. It doesn't quite have the same effect as in XCOM where you can customise and build your soldiers pretty much from the ground up, but it's effective nonetheless. I can't fully recommend Other Side unless you like your challenges steep, but if you do then this is an absolute corker. There's some serious depth to the character development, while the upgrade systems work very well together once you get your head around them. It can be frustrating and there are a few negative elements like the repeated dialogue bites and the forced grind that could have been better, but ultimately it's a gorgeous, atmospheric, hardcore tactics game that works hard to keep you invested despite its flaws. I hope you enjoyed our review of Other Side from Lightbulb Crew and Focus Home Interactive. It's coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC, which is the version we're showing now, with a Nintendo Switch version planned for a little bit later on in the year. Let us know what you think about the game and the review in the comments, and if you did enjoy it, please hit that subscribe button and tag the bell icon too so you're kept up to date with everything we post. We also have a Patreon. If you'd like to support us that way, we really do appreciate it. I've been Mick Fraser of God is a Geek, and you guys have been lovely. Thanks for watching. Bye.